All right, guys, today we are in the Santa Monica Mountains and we are here for a special occasion. We are gonna be trying out a new toy that I bought and that's this trail cam here that you can see. The goal is to hike up into the canyon and find somewhere secluded, somewhere that looks like it may have some kind of a game trail and plant this thing and leave it for a couple of days and see if there's anything on the footage. So like many places in California, the Santa Monica Mountains have also been inhabited by native peoples for millennia, thousands of years. And there are still some signs of their habitation, but very, very few. There is one spot here on this trail that I think is really, really cool. And it is the only spot that I know that indicates ancient habitation here by human beings. Check this out. You can see here that on this rock here is a single mortero. It has been ground down fairly deep, probably for use to grind acorns or other berries and seeds that are out here in this area. But it is pretty much the only artifact that I've ever seen in these mountains. I know that there's pictographs and there's other morteros here and there, but that tells us that native peoples lived here. And why in this particular spot? Well, let me show you. There's a stream coming down from the north here, and there's another stream during wetter years that comes down from the east. And so the convergence of these two streams here would have meant that there would be a perennial pool of water. And as you can see, there still is. So we have two really cool things right here. First of all, you have this pretty good sized spider right there. And then behind it, you have some poison oak. For those of you who are new to the West Coast, uh, that is a great example of what poison oak looks like. You have the three leaves and in the fall, they turn red. That croaking is the sound of a red-legged frog, descendants of tadpoles released in 2014 as part of a program to reintroduce this threatened species to an area where they haven't been seen for over 50 years. Can you imagine hundreds of years ago when Native Americans lived in this canyon and drank from these waters? People coming here, staying out of the rain, finding this shelter. And I bet at one point, they probably had pictographs all over this sandstone rock. The largest urban park in the country, the Santa Monica Mountains have been home to the Chumash Indians for thousands of years. The Chumash, a broad term for many interrelated groups speaking a similar language, occupied a vast portion of what is now coastal and inland California. Tribal petroglyphs can still be found today at sites like Chumash Painted Cave State Historic Park in the San Ynez Mountains and other sites in the Santa Monica Mountains. And although on this trip we didn't see any ancient pictographs, I did get a chance to use my D-Stretch app, which revealed this image of modern graffiti. Crazy. We were here in April, I believe it was, and it was a pretty wet year, and so this creek here was really flowing. But it's so surprising, after several months of Southern California dry heat, that the water is still flowing. What an amazing place it must have been for people to have lived here and have this perennial source of water in this beautiful ancient oak forest. So there is tons of poison oak here, so it really helps to wear long sleeves. And when you get home, to take off all those clothes, immediately turn them inside out, throw them in the hamper, 
and get them washed because you don't want the oils from the poison oak to get on your skin or get on other clothes and they will stay on there for weeks if you don't wash them off. This right here is a bay leaf tree and it's commonly used in kitchens around America. It's got a very pungent smell. If you pick off a leaf here and cut it in half, mm, I love the smells and the aromas of the forest. So I think we've found our spot. There's water, there's dense brush, and there's clear trails that animals would use. Bobcats, mountain lions, deer, coyote, rabbit, skunk. Who knows what's up here? And that's what I want to find out. What a beautiful spot. All right, so we found our tree. This is a perfect place for animals to be navigating through. Um, there's water, there's a clear pathway. It feels safe. And so I think that there's a good chance here in this canyon bed that we will see something in the next couple nights. I'm gonna go ahead and switch on the camera. Close it up. So I am really, really stoked to see what may come along here in the depths of the night. We'll check back in a couple days. All right guys, so it's been a couple of days and we are back to retrieve the trail cam. Let's go check it out. All right, well, the camera is still here and now it's time to check out what might have gotten recorded. Let's see here, put on replay. Over the few days I left the camera out, this coyote was our only visitor but I was elated to see footage of him on the hunt and to get a glimpse into a world that only comes alive when humans depart. All right, so thanks for joining us on this episode of Artistic Off-Road. Hope you enjoyed our adventure to set up the trail cam. We'll see you next time. <laughs>